The book of Genesis chapter 2, verse number 7, and the book of John chapter 20, verse 20 through 22. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, and John 20, verse 20 through 22. Give honor to all the Messiah cast who do such a great job sacrificing and, and so anointed. This is so you can tell prayer has gone into this, and it's just a great, great time to be serving the Lord. Genesis 2, verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Somebody say the breath of life. And man became a living soul. John chapter 20, verse 20 through 22. This is on resurrection day. When he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father hath sent me, even so send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them. Someone say, he breathed on them. And saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. I want to preach to you from the subject this morning, Breathe on me, Jesus. Breathe on me, Jesus. Would somebody tell the Lord that right now? Breathe on me, Jesus. One more time, God. Breathe on me, Jesus. Reach me, God. Talk to me. Somebody praise him right now for what he's about to do. Somebody love him for what he's about to do in your family, in your house. I love you, Jesus. Breathe on me, oh God. I release the gift of faith right now in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, and you may be seated. There's nothing like the breath of God. <laughs> nothing like the breath of God. He holds it. He saves it for special occasions. When he, when he unleashes his breath, anything is possible. Even in creation, he did not breathe on the stars. He did not breathe on the sun. He did not breathe on the moon. He did not breathe on the planets. He did not breathe on the grass or the waters or the clouds. He did not breathe on the animals. He didn't breathe on the insects. He didn't breathe on the fish. But when he formed man, the Bible said he breathed into him the breath of of life. The word breath there is nishama, which is spirit. He breathed into man spirit. Why? Because God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And so the spirit released breath into the body and the Bible said man became a living soul. Job chapter 33 verse 4 said the spirit of God hath made me and the breath of the Almighty hath given me life. I am what I am because of the breath of God that breathed into me. You would not be here right now if God had not breathed into Adam. The Bible said, let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord. What I want to know is, are there any praisers in this room right now? What you've got to understand is the Lord, when it came to forming things, he only breathed into two different, two different beings. He breathed into man, obviously. And the word also says in Psalms, he breathed the breath and the host of heaven was made. That was the angels. The host is the word for military. The warring angels were made by the breath of God. So you understand angels were formed by the breath of God and humans were formed and the breath of God entered into them. No wonder Satan, when he began to see that Adam was formed and God had breathed into him the breath of life, Satan knew the power of the breath of God because when God breathes on something he gives that thing dominion and when God breathed on Adam he instantly had dominion over everything on the planet the thing the devil used to reign in when he was pure and undefiled as he worshiped the Lord but when sin entered into him he lost control and authority over now Adam reigned in dominion because the breath of God was inside of him when God breathes on somebody, they instantly get power over everything that had attacked them before. Satan knew. Well, the only reason 
I lost my authority was because iniquity, Ezekiel said, was found in him. And so I sinned, and that's how I lost my dominion. That's how I became a, a creature of evil, was formed by the breath of God, but became evil through sin. You see, sin is a killer. Oh, yeah. The wages of sin is... The Bible talks about sin that when it is finished, it bringeth forth death. Why? Because that's what sin does. It kills. The Bible said the thief cometh but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And the thief's channel to get to you and to get to me is sin. Sin is a killer. Sin is a killer. That's what's working in you. Death is working in you right now. I don't care how healthy you are, how buff you are. Sin has been inside of you and therefore death is working in you. The Bible said we were all born into sin and shapen in iniquity. You can look holy all you want to, but the word said all of us have come short of the glory of God. We've all failed. Can I get a witness? We've all messed up. Can I get a witness? But if it had not been for the mercy, we wouldn't be here. But there's been mercy and there's been grace and there's been compassion and there's been love. And God breathed into us. And so sin works death. But the breath of God, the spirit, the Bible says is life. There's something about understanding the power of having the spirit inside of you. Romans chapter 8, verse number 9 through verse number 11 says, But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God, the breath of God, dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his, the breath of Christ. The Bible said, If Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. I love the next verse. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. When God breathes on you, when the spirit of God comes in you, are you ready? It's the very same spirit that entered was inside of the body of Jesus when he rose from the tomb that morning the same spirit that gets inside of you today yeah. well you can't take it lightly sweetheart when someone gets the holy ghost that's called god breathing on them god letting every anything in creation know i'm inside of them and what raised me up i just put inside of that person Somebody shout, breathe on me, Jesus. And there's some people you don't want to breathe on you at all. Some of you are sitting by one right now. You're like, oh, God, I can't even look left or right. I might die in church. It's called a toothbrush. And toothpaste. Genius idea. Some people, if they lay hands on you, it's fine until they start talking. And every word starts with the letter H. Hello. How are you? Hope you're okay. And you're like, you're telling me you hope I'm okay. You're exhaling death into my body. That's funny. <laughs> but when God breathes on you, you don't smell it, you feel it. Because his breath doesn't come to you, it comes in you. And when God breathes on a human, you better watch out, because that human will never be the same again. about the breath of God coming inside of someone. And God 
breathed on man and Satan caused man to fall. And they lost the power of the breath of life. And sin took over and then everybody started dying. Adam, Eve, Abel, Cain, Seth. Go down through the generations, everybody was dying because the body is now sentenced to die because of sin and iniquity but when Jesus came down to the earth he had something inside of him that was greater than death over the body greater than what hell could do to you no one had ever seen it before he, he held he kept it inside boy he could have used it when he was walking on the water he could have used it when he had 5,000 people breathe on that. He could have done it when he raised up the girl from the dead, but he didn't. He waited. He could have done it at Calvary. could have breathed on everyone around him, and he, he would have saved them at nothing. But on Resurrection Day, when he got out of the grave, he walked to the disciples, and the word said he breathed on them and said, receive ye the Holy Ghost why because the breath is the spirit and they what in the world does he mean by that and for 40 days he walked with them and then he went up into heaven but that comment he made stuck with them even after he went away because 10 days later they've been stuck in an upper room waiting on this Holy Ghost he breathed on us 50 days ago what does this Holy Ghost mean and the Bible said in the book of Acts chapter 2 they were in one mind in one place they were in one accord and the Bible said suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind what's a rushing mighty wind God breathing and the rushing mighty wind came in and it filled all the house where they were sitting and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire and it sat upon each of them and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And when he breathed that breath, now, no matter what your body dies of physically, if you get the breath of the Almighty in you, if you're born again, if the breath of the Spirit gets inside of you, now there's something in you that can never die. The Spirit of God cannot die. Oh, this body may go to a grave, but I, my soul will never die because the Spirit of the living God lives inside of me so I might be dead physically one day but I will be in the gates of heaven I will walk on the streets of gold because inside of my body inside of my soul is the spirit of the living God somebody yell breathe on me Jesus Holy Ghost, the breath of God. Acts chapter 10, verse 45 and 46 said, And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because on the Gentiles, these were people he did not breathe on. He didn't tell them to receive the Holy Ghost. He was just the, was just the good old church boys. But then these outsiders, they felt the Holy Ghost fall on them. And this is how they knew. And verse 46 said, But they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Acts chapter 19, verse number 5 and verse number 6 says, When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And verse 6 said, Paul laid his hands upon them. And the Holy Ghost came on them. And they speak with tongues and prophesy when the breath of the almighty gets in you there's evidence that it's in you something comes out of you a heavenly language the wind of the spirit if you so will the rivers of living water Jesus said out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water this spanky of the spirit you know what the devil hates about it when someone gets the Holy Ghost you know what he hates about it is that no matter what he's done to them how low he's dragged them what they've done how terrible of sins they've committed when they get the breath of God in them they now have power over everything the devil had them bound by that may 
may not be real to you, but if I have any ex-drug addicts or alcoholics or anybody in here that will tell you I was bound by sin, are there any ex-sinners in here that would let somebody know, though, it's just seven of you, that would let the enemy know, hey, when I tasted Jesus... I was in Modesto about a little over a month ago on a Sunday morning, Modesto, California, and we were in a service, and I told them on Sunday morning, I said, you know what? I said, revival's about to break so cr- break out in America, so crazy, that, that Satanists are going to show up to get converted. And I said, they're going to show up here to get converted. And they were all like, uh, we're... <laughs> that was Sunday morning. Sunday night! A satanic worshiper comes in the building. I don't make you have faith in the word of God. And she was doing a lot of crazy stuff. And they told me she was a Satan worshiper or some crazy comment. But when the Holy Ghost started falling, when God started breathing, she came to the front and all of a sudden she, she, she I, I'll never forget the look in her eyes she knew I've never felt this before and so she just closed her eyes and she raised her hands to a Jesus that she had never worshipped and this same Jesus that breathed on you breathed into her and she began to speak with tongues and they baptized her in the name of Jesus and the devil had a bad day because she worshipped him on the way in but she worshipped him on the way out Somebody ought to praise the king right now. Somebody ought to worship the king. Breathe on me, Lord. (laughs) In the first service this morning, if you were not here, there was a man over here after seven or eight people got the Holy Ghost. One of them, the last one over here, was praying. He was a soldier in the army. I found that afterwards. He's a soldier in the army. He prayed and prayed, and several got it instantly. He kept his hands raised. Brother Derek, Brother Scott, and Brother Milton, I believe, had their hands on him, and they prayed, and God filled the soldier in our army with the gift of the Holy Ghost in this very room. Can I tell you something? The Bible says, in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Let me speak it right now in the atmosphere. It's about to rain Holy Ghost up in this building. People are about to be delivered and set free. And the breath of the Almighty is about to breathe. Neshama, the Spirit. How do, I, how do I get the Holy Ghost? Well, number one, you've got to repent of your sins. You gotta repent. So before we ever pray for the Holy Ghost in a few moments when we're all down here, Pastor, he'll lead us in a prayer of repentance. So from the top down, you know, we'll just we'll follow his instructions and we'll repent of our sins. Turn away from my sin. I don't want to live in sin. Sin is death. I know the outcome of sin. Pleasures of sin are for a season. But when that season ends, Death in relationships, death in homes, death in health, death period, spiritual death, financial death. Sin just brings death. But the Spirit brings life. So I'm going to repent to get past sin and get past death working in me to reach for the Spirit, the life to move in me. Number one, repent. Number two, you have to desire the Holy Ghost. If you do not want it, he will not give it to you. But if you want it, there's nothing that can stop you from him giving it to you. Not your neighbor, not your spouse, not your critical person sitting by you. No one in this building can keep you from getting the Spirit of God, period. Don't let any attitude around you keep you from what God has for you. They, I want to say it boldly, they did not die for you. They did not rise from the grave for you. But he did, and he wants to live inside of you. Look at your neighbor right now and tell them, you need the Holy Ghost. Oh, that was six people. Tell your neighbor, you need the Holy Ghost. 
Some of you had to face the breath just now. Sorry, I didn't mean to. He needs the Holy Ghost and I need to be healed. <laughs> and so you've got to repent and you've got to desire it. And then you have to focus your mind on God. After we repent in a few moments, we're going to pray a prayer of faith. Your mind's going to be on God. What I tell people is this. It's real simple. One of the best ways to get your mind on God, if you're physically able, is to lift your head and lift your hands when you're praying. Why? Because it takes the attention off of you or anybody around you. Your mind and your body is showing. You're showing a physical sign of what you're doing spiritually. My mind's on God. I'm yielding to God's spirit. His ways are above my ways. His thoughts are above my thoughts. I look to the hills from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. I look up to the Lord. Number four, you have to have faith that you're going to receive the Holy Ghost today. Faith is I'm not leaving without it. Faith is what that soldier had this morning. Man, that dude was praying. When everyone else left, he was just praying. That's faith. That's I'm not leaving here without the whole. That's a soldier mentality. That's an That's I love that. I will not leave without him breathing on me. And number five, to receive the Holy Ghost, you have to worship with your own mouth. It makes no sense for me to worship for you and praise God for you out of my mouth and expect God to fill you with his spirit and you speak in tongues when you refuse to speak. I mean, this is pretty deep here. I know it's blowing your mind. But we, it makes no sense for me to expect you to get the Holy Ghost if you refuse to worship him. So what do you, how do I, well, I, what if I don't know how to praise him? What do I, I don't know what to say. You're the perfect candidate to get the Holy Ghost. Some people try to control everything about the prayer meeting with God. You know, uh, but the Holy Ghost is it's a river. It just comes out of you. It's the breath of God. It's his spirit. It's his language coming out of you. And so that when you begin to worship in the, the greatest praise word, if you don't know what to pray, just pray this word. Start telling him, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Why? He dwells in the praises of Israel, the Bible said. So when you are worshiping him and praising him with hallelujah, guess what? He gets off the throne of glory, comes down among us and... pours out his spirit and guess what you will never be the same again oh I wish I had a witness there when that depression has just met the king of kings who lives in you now that suicidal thought has just met the God of glory that lives in you now that addiction can no longer bind you for greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world somebody shout hallelujah stand to your feet right now let's, let's go into this Can you please tell me a better day <laughs> to be filled with the breath of life than Resurrection Sunday? You talk about the devil leaving you alone for a bit. All you got to do is like April 1st, and it's not a fool's day joke, homie. I got the Holy Ghost that day, and you know it. All you have to do is point back to April 1st, 2018. When the devil tries to attack you and say, apparently God has a different opinion about me than you do, Satan. You are condemning me, but he filled me with his spirit. He breathed in me, which lets me know he must have a plan for me. He wouldn't pour himself into me if he was through with me. Oh, I wish I could get that in your spirit. He... You're condemning me, devil, but he's not condemning me because he poured himself into me. He's approving of me. He has plans for me. He just breathed into me. While you're standing, would you turn to your neighbor? If you have to hold your nose, I understand. But turn to your neighbor. And would you ask them, have you received the Holy Ghost yet? Would you do that right now? Would you ask your neighbor, have you received the Holy Ghost yet? And then answer the question, yes or no. If they said no, tell them today's the day.
if, if they said yes, but you know their breath needs healing. They need a miracle. I mean, right? Halitosis is a serious thing. That's one miracle I've yet to see happen. <sighs> Instantly, mint fresh. God can do anything. Anything. I would love to tell you about the miracles I've been seeing in the last couple of weeks. Deaf ears opening. People getting out of wheelchairs. People walking that couldn't walk. Throwing canes down. Walkers down. He's healing people like crazy. But guess what? The greatest miracle of all is when he breathes on you and puts himself. There's not a greater sign of God's approval then you knowing God has just filled me with this spirit. Here's what we're going to do. We have a wonderful crowd today. Several people are about to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, the breath of the Almighty inside of them, which, by the way, gives you joy unspeakable and full of glory, and the half has yet to be told. Peace. You need, anybody need peace in here? Peace in your home? Peace in your mind? Peace in your finances, peace in your marriage. Hello? You need Jesus in you because he is the peace speaker. The word calls him the prince of peace. Peace. Joy. Brand new start. New beginning. It's about to happen right now. Here's what's going to happen so you understand. In a moment, we're going to come down to the front, all of us together, and we're all going to repent. Remember, repentance is the most important thing. Whether you have the Holy Ghost or you don't have the Holy Ghost, we're all going to repent. I'm sure pretty much everybody's already sinned today. In your thoughts, in your mind, your whatever, somebody's messed up. We're all going to repent. And then after we repent, I'm going to pray a prayer of faith, which basically is me taking all my faith and connecting it to all your faith. And then we're going to start shouting hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Guess what? As you start to shout hallelujah and you're worshiping God, all of a sudden God will, whew, and all of a sudden words will start coming to you. No, they're not, they don't even make sense to you, but you'll start letting them out of your mouth and God will fill you with the spirit. I've told you this if you go to this church, but four days from now, 28 years ago, April 5th, 1990, I was seven years old in Kenai, Alaska, when God filled this old boy with the Holy Ghost in a cold night and they took me downstairs and baptized me in that cold water i'll never forget as long as i live i've had wonderful moments in my life i've got two beautiful baby boys i've got the most beautiful girl in the world is my wife and i've got a baby princess about to be born today or tomorrow but let me tell you something the greatest moment of my life is none of that it was april 5th 1990 when god filled me with the gift of the holy ghost and he's going to fill someone today with the gift of the holy Hallelujah. All right, turn to that neighbor and look at them and say, okay, let's go repent. We're going to go repent right now. And I want you to all come down to the front. Pastor's going to come up here. Pastor's going to come lead us in a prayer of repentance. Would you come forward right now? We're all going to repent of our sins together in a moment. We're not dismissed. We're all going to come down to the front and repent of our sins together. Nothing is more important than repenting of our sins. If I'm a Christian... A Christ follower. I should want Christ to live in me. I should want Christ to live in me. People are still coming. Make plenty of room. People are coming. They need the Holy Ghost. People are coming. If you if you go to this church, you're coming down here. I hope right now. I hope you're not in your pew setting a, setting an example like that. I hope you're coming down right now. We're all coming to together. There's nothing like unity. Why? Because according to Acts two, they were one mind and one accord, one place. They were unified. Come on down. Come as close as you can. Come as close as you can. People in the pews, come as close as you can. If you've got the Holy Ghost, come down. You're going to help me pray with somebody to get the Holy Ghost. The second greatest joy in the world is praying someone through to the Holy Ghost. The greatest joy is you getting it yourself. Come on down. Come on, people are coming still from the very back. They're coming. So we're going to get as close as we can up here, guys, if you don't mind. Because there's, there's, a, there's a crowd behind you right now making their way toward God's about to fill out people with the Holy Ghost. Altar workers, get ready. Altar workers, card holders, get ready. Pastor is going to lead us in repentance. I'm going to ask all of you to follow his instruction. 
pray with all your heart. Don't just jump over repentance. But mean what you pray. And you'll get a reward only God can give you. Let's all bow our heads together right now. Lord, we're thankful for your word that has been preached here today. We receive it into our heart. We ask you, God, that it would fall on good ground, that there would be receptivity in our spirit, and that we would acknowledge our utter dependence upon you. We recognize, God, that we cannot save ourselves. We are not good enough. We are not powerful enough. We do not have the ability to save our own souls. But we acknowledge the fact that we need you and that you are in this place today. You are here to save and to deliver. You are here to forgive and to heal. And we're asking you now, Lord, right now, by the authority of the Word of God and the anointing of the Holy Ghost, we ask you, Lord, that you would forgive us of every sin. Those things that I'm aware of, those things I'm not aware of, sins of my heart, my actions, my mind, my spirit, my attitude, I'm asking you, God, to forgive me from the top of my head to the sole of my feet. Cleanse me with your Word. Cleanse me by your blood. I believe that you have heard my prayer. I believe that you have forgiven me, God. Lord, I thank you right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I will spend my life serving you. I will acknowledge you, Lord. I will honor you and worship you. Now, Lord, I am prepared to receive your spirit. And I'm asking you, Lord, right now to fill me with the gift of the Holy Ghost by the evidence of speaking in tongues. In the name of Jesus, I receive your spirit. Would you clap your hands and thank the Lord for forgiving you right now? Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, clap your hands, all ye people, David said, and shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now we have people in the aisles, people in the pews, people in the front. Several people need the Holy Ghost. So, Paul Bay, you're, you're obviously in the, and you're, you're ready to pray with people. And you're going to pray with people to get the Holy Ghost. And as soon as they start speaking in tongues, remember what we do. Throw your thumb in the air just to communicate with me to tell me. So I can tell everyone else that God just breathed on someone else. God just filled someone else with the gift of the Holy Ghost. Are you ready right now to pray? Are you ready for God to fill people with the Holy Ghost? Look around you. Get ready to pray with somebody. If, if you already have the Holy Ghost, get ready for God to use you. We've repented. Now we desire it. Now we lift our heads and our hands. And our mind is on the Lord right now. Now we get our faith out. God's about to do a miracle for you. Now get ready to worship. And by the authority of the Word of God. And by in the name of Jesus, receive ye the Holy Ghost. Shout hallelujah. Now lay your hands on them and be filled with the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, right now, be filled with the Holy Ghost. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Here you go. <laughs> yes. Speak it out. One, just receive the Holy Ghost. One just received the Holy Ghost. Let me know when they get it. Let me know when they get it. Right now in Jesus' name. Now. Loose that tongue now. Two. Just receive the Holy Ghost. Number two. Just receive the Holy Ghost. Who's next? Who is next? Who is next? Two people have already received. There you go. Speak it out right there. Three people have already received the Holy Ghost. She's speaking in tongues, Dr. Myers. Number four. This 
got the Holy Ghost right here. In Jesus' name, who's next? In the last day, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit. I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. That's it right there, number five. He's speaking in tongues. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Come on, Paul Bay, pray with somebody. Lay hands on him. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus.